What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Dirt Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna, okay, not really indie games, kind of like the edge of indie games, if indie at all. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a title that is being pushed out by the Homeworld developers called Earthless. Uh, this is a game that seeks out to be something like FTL meets Slay the Spire meets a number of other influences, including Homeworld. You can definitely feel the Homeworld in there about a ship that is trying to find a habitable planet for a people that have been left sort of stranded and homeless. We're going to dive on into this preview build that the developers fired on over to see if it's something you wanted to check out. There is a demo available for this game right now on the Steam Next Fest, and I figured since it was the Homeworld developers, we would give it a go, despite the fact that you guys will know that I do not like card games, like, in the slightest. Not a big card game guy. So let's see if they manage to win me on over during today's video. 25 or 30 minutes on the clock. Let's do this thing. I'm going to do my best to give you first impressions commentary along the way. Things I like, things I do not like, and hopefully that'll help you make an informed decision as to whether or not this is a good purchase. Earthless is available down below with that demo I was talking about. You can also take a look at my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out with me live couple days a week on Twitch. I stream six or seven hours. You're more than welcome to join me over there. There's a huge block of VODs, but let's start a brand new run. Uh, we can only pick one faction for right now, the International Aeronautics Association. Okay, sounds good. I pick them then, and then we get to choose between three different battleships. There's the Asimov class. We can draw three cards. Those cards will cost no energy for the remainder of the encounter, so that's pretty good. We've got the Clark class. Add five dagger missiles into your hand. Or we've got the Vern class. Lose three heat, gain three energy. I'll go with the Clark class. Let's give that guy a go. I like missile boats that are like shoom, 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 and fire off loads and loads of just kind of little scattered tiny ordnance. All right, so here is our display table. In a nutshell, this game is FTL. They flipped the perspective on it, though, and they put a lot more budget into it, basically. Uh, we travel along paths, and we are trying to get to the opposite end of the galaxy and fight a boss. There are little viewport windows that show you the planets that you're fighting around or, like, the asteroid fields that you currently might be mired in. Kind of a cool idea visually, in all honesty, and they've gone for kind of a retro-futuristic look for the UI and HUD as well, invoking something from what you would have expected from, like, a Ridley Scott movie, where it's, like, high technology that all seems to be running off of tape decks. Down here are our crew. Uh, we've basically got different crew chiefs. They're going to want to do different things in different ways. Uh, in exchange for, like, getting their morale up and making them like you as a captain, they level up and your different departments will get stronger and they'll get perks. Uh, they also have kind of like these randomized things about them, whether or not they're cowardly or noble, so on and so forth, so that you have some rough clue how they want you to behave in order to get their morale back up. But the general experience I've gotten from fiddling around with this is that you're not going to be friends with everybody. You got to kind of do what you got to do in order to keep the ship up in the air. Let's go ahead and do our first encounter. So there it is, we've jumped in with our little dagger class ship. This ship right here, uh, everything else that you're gonna see more or less functions the exact same way that you expect FTL to function. The only difference is they've added a positional component to the game, so you're actually playing on square grids here. A la something like, I don't know, there was like a Star Trek game on the Apple IIe I remember playing that was on a square grid like this with like different ASCII symbols to represent asteroids or like Klingons or like, you know, torpedoes or whatever else were flying around. It's kind of like that. Uh, you can click on your character at any time and you can generate heat in order to move. Heat is listed over here. You can see it right there. Uh, you've also got energy. When it comes to the actual fundamental mechanics of the card game, independent of movement, it's literally just slay the spire. Don't even stress about it. It's not that complicated. It looks like we vent one heat per turn. That's going to be a little bit rough. So let's play. We've got a cluster missile launch. Maybe we do that. I don't think it's going to go off right now, but it is going to look pretty cool. We can discard two cards on the next turn, lose three heat, draw two cards. It's not a terrible idea. I mean, I'm not, like, fighting anybody right now, so we might as well play it. 
Yeah, there we go. Discard those. Do what you like. End of the turn, and we'll kind of get our heat back on the next turn. Missiles went out. The game does seem to have pretty good graphical fidelity when it comes to attacking and sort of harassing the enemy and bothering them. This guy right here is going to become an issue that we need to deal with. So let's go ahead and we'll scooch on forward, I suppose. What's the range on this? Two? Two? Let's scooch on forward a little bit. We're going to scooch ever so slightly. And then we're just going to go shields up, I suppose. Can I target lock that guy from where I'm at right now? I cannot. Okay, well then we'll just go to the next turn. It actually doesn't look like he's entirely aware of me. I'm going to bomb him out from back here because, like, I can do that. We'll end our turn. There goes the cluster ordinance. Uh, it hit him for two damage, which is really fantastic. You love to see it. And then we need to kind of, like, slide in right here and just finish him off with, like, a little bombardment. And so, like, from what I can see so far, the game is not altogether super unique and distinct. Uh, from that first fight and the couple that I played on my own from something like Slay the Spire. However, it does look like they're putting some actual detail into the way that the weapons feel and the way that like explosions go off and, and the way that kind of you're interacting with your foes in visual flair, which I think is good. We'll go ahead and vent some heat right there. Go ahead and fart. You gotta, you gotta fart the ship every now and again just to keep it nice and feeling healthy so that it doesn't get a tummy ache. Uh, we get to open up a card pack, and we get to develop out our deck. Uh, we've got Fire Direction Controller. This is an engineering card that I think plays strongly into our strategy because we appear to be a missile boat. This makes it so that for the rest of the fight, all of our missiles get an extra range. I'm going to take that because it seems like my entire deck is kind of focused on shooting lots of missiles and lots of torpedoes. I don't know if there's like a time limit for how long we can be on the map, this game, I think, does have a crafting system as well. Uh, so you find just sort of these conceptualization things like rations and, like, water and supplies around. And then you can use them to, like, upgrade cards. You can recycle cards if you end up having, like, things in your deck that you're not a big fan of to get baseline materials out so that you can upgrade other cards. So it does look like there's some level of determinism strapped on into the game right there just in case that might be what you're interested in. This right side of the map seems like it's going to have a lot less drama. So I kind of want to go for that. There's a transmission over here. Let's go take a look at the transmission. Captain, we have received data from other colony ships that will allow us to improve the function of our crew. The signal bandwidth is weak and limits our data throughput, however. Were we only able to, or we were only able to receive enough data to upgrade one of our officers? That's still fine by me. Like, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, we've got a couple of abilities here. So every four turns, we get two energy for free from reactor control cycling on behalf of our science officer. I just want to mention, I do like how everything in the game uses kind of like CRT screens. And I very much like these portraits right here. These look really, really good. With engineering, we've got damage control systems. So whenever we lose a hull, we gain a hull. We've got Stellar Marksman. When you deal damage to a target that's four tiles away, deal one additional damage. We've got Reconnaissance Sensors. You can reveal unit types in the sensor interference and fog tiles. Unit action preview is not revealed, though. And then we have Get Us Out of Here. At the start of a turn, if you are adjacent to an enemy, lose a heat. I'll probably say Damage Control Systems. Let's work on those. So he's now a Tier 2 Chief Engineer. And our damage can... Did we just get... So did we get the thing that was implied right there? Or did we already have that and it upgraded it? Okay, so we that was the new perk that we picked up specifically. Let's go ahead and go to a salvage site. What do we have over here? Very cool artwork right there. And I'm loving these little kind of like alien style screens that only have like the smallest frame rate as things rotate around. It's clear they're running at like, you know, two frames per second with a bad refresh rate. It's definitely got the retrofuturism down. Uh, Captain, we have located the remains of another human spacecraft. We can salvage for parts or, or to upgrade our ship and repair our hull. Yeah, salvage for parts. There's a warhead arming sequence. It adds a tactical strike card to the top of the deck. I don't know what tactical strike does. We've got a railgun shot. An indirect line AOE armor piercing five or six damage shot. 
We also have flusium capacitors, just in case. You know, your floozies are getting a whole lot of use up here in space. You want to make sure that they're properly supplied and not subject to energy surges. That's all. Uh, so make any card cost minus one energy, minimum zero energy. I'd probably just say take the, yeah, take the, the flusium capacitors. And then is that going to be inside of our manufacturing right here? So apparently the flusium capacitor is actually applied to something. So we've got to take it and put it on a thing. I would say put it on that guy right there so that it becomes free because I never like paying energy for cards for like powers for things that modify like the rest of the fight. I found that if you're like power heavy in a game like this or slay the spire or whatever else, it tends to be one of those things where you spend an entire turn spinning up all your buffs and so getting them all reduced down to the cost of free fitty sounds pretty awesome to me. So we've got an asteroid in the way right here. We've got an enemy back there. Let's go ahead and launch a missile at the asteroid. I'm also going to put up shields, I guess. I can't really target lock anybody right now, so let's just play this slow. The enemy is on the move, so we are going to want to watch out for what we've got going on here. We now have more missile range, which is good because those have a three range. I don't know if by like moving forward by one, I could really do something here, but I would like to do something. So let's maybe launch some missiles at this dude. We'll put up our shield. This guy's probably going to push us super hard from here. We're a little bit high. Oh, he just shielded back up. He didn't actually try to fight us. Okay. Let's go ahead and vent some heat. Let's put up some shield. We're going to fire on him again, and he should be down. So the enemy's been eliminated. I do think that the addition of, like, a positional component to the game is nice. I'd like to see more depth to it, though, like, make your facing matter. So you've got, like, directional shields, and you've got, like, directional armor. And, like, it's clear we're flying, like, a big ship right now. I don't know if it's, like, a Corvette. I don't know if it's, like, a battle cruiser. what it's supposed to be. But it's clear we're a large colony ship, right? I think adding... So right now it seems a little bit simple. Like, you can move around, but it doesn't really affect anything. I do think the addition of, like, taking this diagram down here and dividing it up into a Mech Warrior style... You know, you have shields on all four directions, and you can change your facing in order to take shields from different directions. And then that forces you to spiral around, and the enemy's got their own shield facings and stuff like that. And then on top of that, if you also had positional armor and you could put different abilities on different sides and kind of get different cards from drawing different facings on the enemy. I don't know. The card game seems a little simple right now for what it is. And so maybe it'll get more complex as we get further on into it. But let's go ahead and do that. We'll target lock that nerd right there. We've got eight shields, so we should be okay. He did wipe out my shields, which surprises me. He doesn't have, like, a whole lot left, though. Let's go ahead and run that right there. We'll go shields up. I do very much like that flickering sort of augmented reality effect that they've got. That's the thing, is that, like, the visual stuff is all right where you want it to be. At least it feels like it is to me. He's got to decide if he wants to move out of range or not, or just get annihilated along with that entire asteroid field. All right, so we have no more enemies on the grid. Let's go ahead and just move our way across right here. I think that it should probably go into a simplified mode or something like that once you defeat the last of the enemies and there's no more contacts on the grid. Oh, unless are more of them about to jump in? It could be interesting. I wonder if more of them are about to jump in. I was about to say, if there's no more enemies on grid, then why does the battle just not end? This might be the answer to that question. Uh, we do need to lose some heat, so I'm going to play battle prep right there. It looks like the game already, if you only have two cards left. Yeah, they reinforce. Okay, well, I learned something today then. Uh, we're going to want to drop cluster munitions. Probably, like, somewhere, like, right there would be my guess. So let's put a cluster munition on them. Technically, I can fight this guy, or I can knock out an asteroid and run. We don't really... I mean, I guess I could put Vulnerable on him. Yes, yes, they are. Let's go ahead, and we'll drift our way around here. Cluster bombs are already in the air. Looks like we only got one hit. 
That's okay, though. That's one less thing pursuing us right now. I knew that venting heat was going to come up on the next challenge, so that's good. Out, out, and away we go. We've completed yet another challenge. We've gathered eight supplies, and it looks like we've got ourselves another reward pack. Uh, we've got an Executioner Missile Launch. When you call it something like that, dude, I kind of have to tell you. You named it the Executioner, man. That's a sick-sounding missile. If I was playing Mech Warrior and I was in the Mech Bay and they were like, all right, so what do you want to slap on the old Blackjack? And they were like, uh, no, you, we got an Executioner Missile Launcher. I was like, fair. You know, it might be an SRM. It might be an LRM. It may be a whatever RM. I don't really care. Take it. Uh, deals three damage, and if they're below health, they take six more damage. If you destroy them, gain energy. Yeah, so that's kind of like an Executioner's shot right there, and it does count as a missile. So it should actually have four range uh, once we're in combat due to the fact that we have that that power that we turn on at the beginning of each round. The other option is defensive salvo, which I think is actually really, really good. So this is an AoE that's a T-shape. Uh, it damages everything around you and gives you shield. So this is also a good pick in a game like this because this card by itself allows you to eliminate both an attack and a defense in exchange for some range uh, from your deck, thus making it more consistent that you can pick up things you want. This also allows you to satisfy offensive and defensive requirements simultaneously, which in the overall turn economy, being able to do that with one card instead of two is always kind of nice. This card, however, has extreme utility. You can basically use it to have like infinites. I'll try it. We'll, we'll, we'll go with the salvo launch. We've got ourselves two points of interest. I guess we'll go after one. Captain, we've collected intact Lusk Pearls during our last encounter. Oh, look at that, dude. Our ship has kind of like a ship-wide slack channel. So you can never escape from duty. I'd like to request that priority be given to research these pearls for improving our combat capabilities. Captain, the research team has been waiting for an opportunity to take a close look at the Lusk's anatomy. There's a significant chance that these pearls might aid medical advancement. Priority should be given to medical. Alright, so if we research combat capabilities, navigation, gunnery, and engineering will be happy. And if we do this one right here, science and communications will be happy. I'm going to go with the pragmatic option. Uh, so, tip-top, we've received Missile Launch as a card. That'll probably come up in the next fight. We'll see what happens with it. Captain, we've received data from the other colony ships that allow us to... Oh, cool, nice. I can upgrade a crew again. Uh, we can get two hull back at the end of every encounter. Uh, we can also get... Let's increase the range of all missile cards by one. Let's upgrade gunnery because we already have that power so now we've got like plus two range on our missiles uh, which is rapidly making us way more nasty to deal with uh, it looks like there are battlefield wide modifiers so enemies get overcharged i don't know what that means uh, applies bonus damage equal to the number of stacks on their next attack so that's pretty gross and we've also got attacks and skills targeting the player. We'll put a sensor overload card in their pile. Okay. Um, cluster missile launch should go out to, like, right there, I think. And we'll kind of see if that finds purchase and hits anybody. We do have five damage on the missile launch right here, but I'd like to keep my cover actually in front of me as much as possible. Missiles away. Uh, we have one splash. Let's go ahead, and we are going to come around this way. Oh, they're not going to let me turtle, eh? All right, I got to discard two cards because we're going to need to get our heat down on the next turn. So we'll discard those two, submit it. We'll run our fire controller real fast. We do have the executioner missile launch. Technically, I can blap that on somebody right now. Didn't really do a whole lot, but it worked on their shields a little teensy tiny bit. Uh, they're going to pull on over, dude. We are getting outrun right now. This is not great as far as heat goes. Uh, we do have another cluster missile launch that I can put out there. 
I do kind of need to get ahead of whatever's happening here. This is kind of bad. What is that, a Lusk Hive? Jesus. Okay. This is much more interesting, though. I want to point out that I, I like what's going on here. I like the battles that have a little bit more to them, I suppose. Yeah, let's put some heat on the board. I don't really know what else I can do here. Uh, we will do six damage to somebody out here. Yeah, I guess we'll cluster bomb them. We'll go shields right there. If I missile that guy and he doesn't move, we'll kill him on the next turn. I think we're going to take a little bit of a pounding here, though. Shields are definitely down. Big time. Like, half of our health gone in one turn. Rough one. Those guys are up out of my butt crack now, though, which is good. We did not pull very much heat out this time, which kind of sucks. Uh, so I do think we're going to have to play battle preparations again. That means i got to discard two cards, which kind of blows. But I don't think there's too many ways around it. Uh, we'll discard you and discard you, I guess. We'll go four shields right there, just so we can soak. We'll keep creeping forward until we get something that kind of gets rid uh, of some of our heat. On this turn, we should get our heat bottomed out, which is good. Let's go ahead and hit that guy right there to get him out of the way. That's debris cover, so we take one less damage from all sources. I think this fight's a runner. Like, I think we should basically just be hauling ass here and getting out of here as much as possible. I feel very passionately about this. Uh, we do have sensor overloads that we're going to have to deal with that are just eating up our hand right now. We'll go shields up. Shields up, vent heat, and that's what I got for the moment. Hopefully the shields hold. Uh, the Lusk Hive put out a dude in front of us. Inconvenient for sure. So I'm going to need a target lock right there. I'm going to need a barrage. I'm going to need that. That gets him out of our way. Shields are back up. We keep running back to the backfield as much as possible. He does get a shot, but we're okay. And it looks like shields are actually maintained in between turns, too. So all those turns where I wasn't preemptively running shields, I was making a mistake. I should have been. All right. Uh, missile launch to right there. Cluster munitions to right there. We still have five shields. Hopefully that's good enough. Can't really do too much with the Executioner. I do have my special ability, this big button over here. I don't know if you saw that. There's a big button on this side that when you get your, like, super ability, uh, your ultimate, effectively, you can hit the big button, and it'll add a whole bunch of dagger missiles on in. So there you go. So technically, we can kind of, for free, kill all these guys around us now. We don't need to. It's just kind of fun, you know what I mean? Like, every now and again, you got to put the enemy on notice. And, like, remind them, like, woohoo, like, I'm watching. You know what I mean? Like, I'll bomb out your hive right now. Like, I don't even care. Uh, but we should probably leave. Encounter's done. Uh, we are going to get, so we can get an artifact or we can get a card. Let's get an artifact so we got the Boschel Plated Relay. Make an equipment card last plus one turns. Okay. Oh, we get both of them. Very nice. Uh, so we've got serrated rounds. Every time you deal damage to a target, deal two more. Ooh, that's vicious. Yeah, I want the serrated rounds. I feel like the enemy's kind of outrunning my DPS right now, or my DPT. Let's go ahead and take the transmission so that we can upgrade another department. I think... Heat transfer does not sound terrible. Ooh, you can now move diagonally. Oh, that would have been so nice. And we would have taken less damage and we would have got bogged down less on that last fight if I could move on a diagonal, dude. Let's uh let's let's elevate our ability to do diagonals. Salvage for parts or repair hull. Repair the hull. We got doo dooed on a little bit in that last fight, and we're about to go into a boss. I don't know exactly how that's gonna play. But we're going to give it our best college try. That thing is huge, and I don't like it. It worries me. Okay. 
on the plus side, we have a very mobile turn right now because I can vent my heat right after I do that. We've wiped that out. I don't know if it's going to help, but we did. I did a thing, all right? And we'll stop off right here. Oh, they fire at me from... Okay, so they've got... Uh, they've got, like, artillery strikes and stuff, too. Fair. Fair. Can I hit that thing, like, anywhere? So they do have their Seekers over there. I'm going to strongly suggest we just launch cluster munitions over to that side. We can move over to here. Executioner missile launch kills all of them for free because we get the energy back. Fire controller is now up and running. Vulnerable on that gun. Don't let it move. Okay. Next gun is now down. It looks like they're spawning something in on this next turn. Let's get serrated rounds up and running. Let's get shields all nice and dummy thick out here. That sounds good to me. It may become about. Mmm, there's suicide drones. Good to know. Go ahead and get a free kill right there and give me my energy back. If it gets them off the field of play, I'm happy with it. It looks like this thing regenerates too. So we're going to want to stay a little bit spry. Let me vent some heat. We're going to put some vulnerability on that guy right there. We're going to get some shields running. Unfortunately, we didn't pull a lot of attack on this turn, so there's not much that I can do there. I will generate one heat on this side, and we will double fire some missiles. I think I should like to put up some shields, and we'll also put a little bit of damage on the main unit, I think. I think it's a good play. I'm going to get back behind this meteor, and maybe I can take cover behind it and not take some damage here. Uh, we've got a big engagement right there. If I can line that up, that'll definitely chin check them a little bit, and they'll have to figure out what it is that they want to do. I can move diagonal over to here, give myself a shield. I do think that killing you is probably of solid utility, and then that'll make you susceptible to the cluster munition when it falls. Very nice. All right, enemy's damage is stacking on up. That cannon's going to fire across us, so we're going to need to figure out somewhere else to be. However, suicide bombers are going to spawn on both those sides. Let's pull over to here. Executioner you. Keep damage going out to the main system, I guess. I will gain a heat, I will gain a shield, and I will lose a heat right now because there's not much else that I can actively play. Uh, but this is much more intricate. If every fight in the game was like this fight right here, I would be forced to admit that this is a rad-ass card game. Um, I, I like this fight, and I like the last fight. The first couple fights, I was like, uh, dude, this is just Slay the Spire on a grid. I don't care about this. Uh, but now what I'm seeing is a little bit better. This is a fight that requires you to kind of pay attention. It, require, it requires you to sort of look before you leap. Like, it, it forces you to keep pressure on when fighting with these bad guys. And it's actually pretty entertaining right now, which... It's kind of like getting a blood... That's kind of like getting blood out of a stone with me to complement a card game, because I just fundamentally do not like them one tiny bit. Go ahead and give me some dagger missiles. Uh, we're going to put this stuff out pretty much wherever we can. Actually, it's probably smarter that I keep the missiles going out to there. Oh, can I not hit that angle? I don't think I can hit that angle. All right. I will settle then for wiping out a turret on this turn. I'm settling. I'll move back over here to see if... There we go. That'll let me hit it. 
It put me a little bit too close to the main core, but hey, we already 15% recharged our stuff. Cluster Munition is now out, adding more damage. It was played twice, so that's even better. Uh, this thing does extra damage if they're at half health, but I don't think they're at half health right now. Let me pull up to here. We're going to reinforce our shields. And actually, we're going to play battle prep just to get our heat back down. So we took we took a solid little beating right there, which sucks. I would prefer not to take a beating, but that's the way life goes sometimes. With our four energy, I don't have my free kill right now on these guys, so we are going to have to expend a missile, saving ourselves from eight damage. I would like to get my shields back up and running. We'll go barrage right there. Barrage will allow me to double bombard this guy. It looks like he's got some kind of active effect going on, too. Looks like we're inside of a red zone. I should probably move. And the cannons are back. You love to see it. All right, drop a cluster munition right there. He's almost at half health right there, but I don't have the angle to hit him. What about if I move down to here? Okay, I don't have the angle. Fair. We need some of these guns to go down, though. Very, very badly. I guess I'll start by softening that over there. We've got a second to play around with before that guy gets here, so... Run battle prep one more time. We get more cards on our next turn. This turn's kind of like a wash already, so... We'll figure out what we want to do next. Cluster munitions are out. We have cluster munitions ready to run again. We're going to keep that going. I'm going to move inside the red zone to get rid of you. I think I'll actually just kind of reinforce the shields for a second. And then we'll dip back behind this asteroid again. That had to have been one of the best cluster munitions that anyone has ever clustered in the history of munitions that cluster. I'm not trying to be super wild and crazy out here, but that was like a really good shot. Uh, so we can gain heat and we'll play our attack card twice on this turn. If he was below 30 HP, this would be a devastating turn for him because I could double cast Executioner Missile. Let's move over to here. I guess I'll take my energy back right there. I'm not like super in love with this play that we've got going, but like it might do something. I guess it kind of depends if this holds till next turn, but I'm going to move over to here. We're going to get shot by that turret, but that's fine. I don't really care. Go ahead and shoot some missiles at him. It does hold till the next turn. That's good information to be aware of. Let's get rid of the suicide bomber over here. Move back over this way. Vent my heat. And put vulnerable on him like I don't know I'm just trying to survive long enough to get my to get my special ability here we have like more and more dead zones that we have to play around as well as we're getting further into this hey give me some cluster munitions right there I suppose I'll bang some missiles at you and then just like give me a turn Get my energy back up. I guess we can go Clark class over here, too. We can raise the great and powerful refrain of Clark, we needed you. That was a turn. 
Oh, okay. Cluster munitions flying all over the place. Hey, and there she is. Oh, that thing was alive? I didn't realize it was like a big scary bug thing. Cool. Is that the demo? I enjoyed it. I actually think they flipped the nail on the head. I was really, really bored like the first two missions or so, like the first two fights. But by the time we got to... Oh, cool. Uh, but anyways, by the time we got to the final couple fights, those were actually quite thoughtful. You kind of had to like think about where you wanted to move to and like what tiles you wanted to be on. So I like it. It's cool, man. It's got style. It's got flair. I still think it should use like a facing system with like different sides of your ship that have different weapons equipped on it or whatever, but that would probably be a fundamental rebuild at this point. And so it works, man. It works. Go play the demo for yourself. There's two other ships you haven't seen yet. I can verify that they play differently. Uh, they've got different strategies. And so you can check out the other two ships. I think one of them vents heat super fast, so it's like crazy mobile, but it gets knocked out like instantly if it gets like touched by the enemy. And then there's another ship that I don't remember what its gimmick was. I played all three of them. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. It wasn't really an indie game, but Earthless is by the Homeworld devs, so I figured I'd give them a go. I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.